Welcome everybody to DDO Players News Podcast. This is episode number 94 and we are recording it live on July 25th. I am your host for this evening, Draculetta. You may notice that we do not have a pine leaf with us tonight. That is because I had some uh, strange scheduling things that went on for me today and I couldn't do the show until late. So I reached out to some of my friends and one person answered my call. The one and only Lessa. Hey, thanks very much for having me on. So I have one friend at least. So one friend. So and you are one friend it with, because... with no life, as we discussed earlier. <laughs> That's right. We did discuss that. You have no life. Everybody else had a life and things to do. <laughs> so thanks for coming on. I appreciate it very You're much. You're welcome. At this very, and I got to give Lessa a lot of credit because this was like a very, and when I say spur of the moment thing, it was a spur of the moment thing. She came yeah, on was... at the very last minute. So you know what I was doing when you messaged me? I was on a poke walk. Why does that not surprise I was Pokemon you? hunting, yeah. Why does that so that's why I didn't answer. And it kind of, you know, it makes you mad. Other Pokemon players will understand this. When you're out hunting for Pokemon and your phone buzzes and you think, oh, I got a Pokemon, and it's a freaking text message, and you're like, oh, <laughs> leave me alone. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Don't you understand I'm busy? That's why I didn't answer, by the way, until 15 minutes later. I did. <laughs> did well, see, but I kind of give you credit because I knew I was like, ah, she'll answer me eventually. And then I'm like, okay, she's not answering me. So I'm like, hmm, what am I going to do? I'm screwed. So yeah. So have you caught them all yet? I uh, probably have about 55 or 56 Pokemon right now. Wow, really? Yeah, yeah. I've been pl- I play every day. Uh, walk and play. So Hatch-egg. do you find that since you started playing that, are you walking more than yes. you Yes. Oh my God, yes. Really? I'm in so much pain. I, can't, I hurt. I hurt all the time. But I figure, I figure eventually I'll get used to it. <laughs> I've heard that from a lot of people, though, that they say it really does get you out and walking, though. So Yes, yes, because normally I, I associate uh, walking and exercise or of any kind, really, with pain. Well, yeah, um, exactly. I don't, I don't want to do it, but this uh, more s- um, associates that, you know, that pleasurable gaming uh, feedback that you get in your brain. when, it, But you also have to go out and walk in order to get it done. So... It's a good trade-off. I'm liking it a lot. You so try it. have you like found that you're going places that you normally don't go either? Because I've heard that from a lot of people as well, too. Yes. That they're right. actually exploring hear, more of their town. Yes. You want to hear a really off-topic story? <laughs> Why not? We've already gone off the rails. <laughs> We've we'll already just, gone way off topic. We'll just take it Five minutes into the show. <laughs> Let's take it further off the rails. I went. I was out of town last week in Dallas, and um, uh, I was staying near the museum district. And uh, they they have this little golf cart service that will come and get you and take you to the museum. So my my friends and I called this little golf cart service, and we were all three of us playing Pokemon Go. And the guy that picked us up was also playing Pokemon Go. <laughs> So, okay, now that's he, awesome. So he drove us around the downtown Dallas area, and we caught Pokemon. And I caught an Onyx. Like he, we all freaked out. We it came up on the tracker, and he was like, "Onyx!" Roar! And then the next thing you know, we're tracking an Onyx in downtown Dallas. And then he just boom, boom, pulled the golf cart over to the side of the road, and we all caught one. It was like the best hunt ever. I guess so. that's awesome. Yep. So yeah, this whole Pokemon thing—it's crazy how it has just like yeah. totally exploded. I'm telling you, there's going to be copycats coming pretty soon. <laughs> no, there will. Yeah, but they're not going to be as successful. Yeah, probably. Get it first. I think what helped Pokemon, though, is the actual IP Pokemon that they're using. Because mm-hmm. uh, you have the whole nostalgia. Like, did you ever play Pokemon when it originally came out? No, but my kids did. So it's nostalgic for me in that way. Oh, well, see, there you go. So, All right, well, enough of this Pokemon talk, because we're actually not here to talk about uh, Pokemon. No, right? This is a not. Dragons <laughs> Online podcast. This is not Pokemon players, <laughs> but there's an idea. I'm telling you. Players Alliance probably will pick you up if you want to do a Pokemon players podcast. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look. We actually have some Dungeons & Dragons online news. I know. It's crazy. I know. There's like so much news. The weirdest thing about this, though, is last week we talked about a thread that a player started, and he was just kind of reminiscing about how he loved DDO, how great DDO he was, how he wanted to thank, you know, Turbine and all the work, and, you know, he was helping everybody well if they did get laid off, yada, yada, yada. We kind of talked about that last week. Well, in the thread, our executive producer, Severlin, 
kind of responded in the thread and dropped a bombshell and just kind of dropped the mic and walked off stage. He says, quote, we are planning out the future of DDO in years and discussing the possibility of an expansion near the end of 2017. Cool things are coming, Seb. So, expansion. That is amazing. So, like, wow, yeah. that is crazy. Expansion, possibly. So, all the naysayers who said that we weren't ever going to get anything new, we're already in maintenance mode, nobody cares, Turbine hates us, I guess... That's not true. Not according to Severlin, it's not. <clears throat> so I, I guess we'll see. You know, but that begs the question, what do we think it's going to be? Because there's so much, like if they're talking expansion level. Like a paid expansion? I assume that's what it means. <clears throat> I mean, that's what that means to me. And this I mean, time, yeah, I'm that's... not, this time I'm not going to miss it. The last time I missed it and um, I didn't get the free you know with like the, if you pre-ordered you could get the onyx the yeah statue to give you the panther I i'm not gonna miss it this time. yeah heck, heck no me either i'm like day one here's my money yeah <laughs> shut up and take my money <laughs> exactly here's my money give me my whatever you're gonna give me for ordering this thing so yeah so i don't know that's just what and like i said the thing that cracked me up so much though is <laughs> like sam just like came into this thread just like said this and just literally just walked away then and yeah. every, everybody's like and after what? that i'm sure there was a mini freak out oh yeah there was <laughs> and um i'll be honest i should Tell have us like, more. i should actually have gone back you know gone further in and see if he did respond anymore but yeah it, it was just crazy it was just like okay we've gone from you know we laid a bunch of people off uh, the game will still continue as we have a plan to oh yeah by the way we got an expansion coming in 2017 so uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Hopefully we'll get some more news and we'll see what else they can come. But uh, there is, of course, I've seen a lot of speculations on, okay, so what is it going to be? Uh, is it going to be maybe Anorak? Because they did talk about doing the Anorak Desert a while ago, and then they stopped working on it. And then I know I did see a lot of people talking about maybe uh, they're going to do Waterdeep, which would be pretty <laughs> cool. Yeah, that would be pretty awesome. Now but that's not Eberron, right? That's Forgotten Realms. That is true. But, uh, see, I'm wondering if, well, see, that's a good question. I never thought about that because the last expansion was a Forgotten Realms expansion. So, exactly. So would we go back to Eberron for one or would we stay in the Forgotten Realms? That's the question. It's, how, cool, how cool would it be to do a whole series of quests in the city of Sharn? That would be amazing. I think it would be really cool. I mean, that was described as this big city in the sky. So just, I just think it would be really cool. You got to kind of work your way up. To the upper tier. Or you could be, uh, like, I can't remember which book it happened in, but the party actually pushed a guy, one of the guards, off the side. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was in, um, oh, shoot, what book was that? Dreaming Dark? Me. It, it, was, it was from the Dreaming Dark series, but I think it yes. was this book. So I, that's, that stuck out in my mind because they were really concerned that they had killed that guy. <laughs> they luckily pushed this guy off the edge and he well, fell. <laughs> yeah, I mean, usually that's yeah not a good thing to push somebody off. But hey, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. Oh, look, we have somebody spamming in the chat room. That's awesome. Yay! Yay for the spammers. And guess what? You're banned now. So ha, there you go. All right. Now, let's get back to other game news other than the expansion. Uh, you know, a while back, they did say they were going to look at uh, reducing the lag in the game, and they were going to impose a mailbox limit. They did do that, but they are giving some players time to clear out their mailboxes. And it looks like there is still several players that need to do that. Uh, Cordovan posted... This uh, was posted on the 21st of July. He said, as of Wednesday, July 20th, here's the player count of folks with 50 or more males in their inbox. Arganescent, 273 players. Kenneth, 245. Galanda, 311. Orion, 216. Kyber, 219. Sarlona, 300. Thalanus, 307. And Wayfinder, 45. Poor Wayfinder. So They're Galanda, always last in everything. Galanda's winning... <laughs> Kawanda is winning the race. <laughs> so they're saying, folks, clean your mailboxes out because there will be a time when they are going to clean them out for you. 
Yeah. So if you don't, I'll be looking forward to that. The, I'll be looking forward to the first forum post. It's like, oh somebody yeah, somebody emptied out my mailbox. I'm a rage troll. I will have my popcorn ready. Great. <laughs> I'll just be sitting here eating popcorn. It's like, oh, there's another one. <laughs> oh, there's another one. Yeah. You had plenty. Of exactly. <laughs> so public okay. notice, people, clean your mailboxes out if you have that many mail. I. Why would you save that many mails in your box to begin? With? I don't know. That's ridiculous. Maybe if. If you're completely out of storage space, if you're one of those pack rat people that keeps I everything. I guess. I will admit I have used the mail system as storage on occasion, but not to that extent, I don't think. That's just crazy. So, yes, they are giving everybody plenty of warning. Uh, it will come. They will do it for you, and you don't want that. So do it yourself. Problem solved. And uh, we also had an update. It is update 31, patch 4. Of course, along with that, we have release notes. Uh, not a lot in this. The Artificers, uh, Arcno Technicians, Arcane. That is a lot of Arcane, Arcno words in a row. Mechanism mm-hmm. uh, now works correctly. So Artificers are rejoicing everywhere. The Automated Repairs now works more reliably as well in the same tree. The Ranger Deepwood Stockings Merciful Shot should now use range power instead of melee power. And my Rangers are rejoicing on that because that was kind of ticking me off. I do have one Deepwood Stalker and I'm like, mm-hmm. why is this using my melee power? Uh, also, we have a few item changes. Combat Mastery now functions correctly. Spell Focus uh, now properly adds all DC schools. Deceptions Tooltip now always displays properly. And the Epic Rift Maker's Force Damage uh, and Glow now function correctly. Few Quest got some updates. The Haunted Halls of Evening Star. They have implemented changes that should help them identify a cause for why the Doppelganger fight sometimes will fail to function correctly. This may also reduce the number of times this issue may occur and i know i've seen on the forums uh probably 10 or 15 times in the last couple of weeks uh, for some reason a lot of people are running uh, haunted halls of evening star again really and that doppelganger keeps uh bugging out so oh that's too I bad know a lot of people are excited about that fix but i'm not sure why everybody's running that again all of a sudden and i've seen a bunch of people on twitter talking about running that so i'm like what's up with that why is everybody is there like something good that comes out of there or something? I don't know. Uh, the, oh, yeah. There's a really cool necklace that when you get hit, you sometimes uh, a shadow pops out of it and fights for you. Oh, well, that's yeah, pretty, pretty cool. cool. Well, maybe that's why everybody... Really, is. really high level one, too. But that doppelganger should now be fixed. Also in the quest, what goes up? They created a workaround for an issue that could prevent some players from repeating the quest. Affected players should now speak with Sherrod, then speak with uh, Kara Padawan heroic art giver for the storm horns and follow the prompts to repair what goes up taking an arc reward from the heroic storm horns arc should also allow Sherrod to speak with them again if this workaround does not resolve your issue you can submit a bug report through gdobugs.turbine.com and they will fix or help to identify your further issues so that was it for that patch not a lot Yep. And then now it's Alessa's turn to talk. What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no worries. Did post a Kenneth Crafting more info plus recap thread. And we all know Lessa is our resident crafter. Yeah, I like crafting a lot. I'm very much into it. I oh, you are. from your question earlier, that necklace sure. that the doppelganger drops is called the Necklace of Mystic Eidolons. And mine is minimum level 28, has insightful decks plus four, insightful con plus four. It's called an Eidolon Summons, and it's that greater shadow, and uh, he comes out and fights for you. And it also uh, is augment summoning, so it makes him even stronger. And mine has a green slot in it, and it makes you go sleep, and it gives you death block. It's a pretty cool necklace. Okay, I have to. You get, need that? Yeah. I, I have to get to level 28 now. Yeah. I that. that sounds awesome. I know. <laughs> Heck yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and it procs quite a bit, too. Oh, wow. If, just in case you were interested. Yeah, I was looking at this Kenneth Crafting recap. I didn't even know that there was one. I have been out of the loop for several days. And uh, there are some things in this thing that jumped right out at me. You were asking me about the the 50% success mark will now be 15 levels below the recipe as opposed to 10 levels below. Let's say you're trying to make something. Uh, your if your crafting level has to be within ten levels of what you're trying to make, or you can't even attempt it. 
Oh, okay. All right. Now you will only have to be within 15 levels of whatever you're trying to make before you can try to do it. Oh, okay. That's now that makes sense now. Why they entice you to go to the DDO store and get the the 25% success rate. Mm, gotcha. That okay. adds that bit. Because let's say if you have a 50% chance of doing something and you only have so many ingredients, if you fail, you're going to lose some of those ingredients. And you might not get a second shot at crafting that. Not right away, anyway. So it's better to, you know, pop a little thing in there, you know, 10% success, 20% success, whatever. Give yourself a little bit better chance of making whatever it is you want to make. Uh, and you asked me about flex shards. You said, what are flex shards? What are those? Because they're mentioned in this post. Uh, flexible crafting shards, um, when you're crafting at the lower levels, let's say I can craft blindness immunity, but only on my goggles. Well, when I get to higher levels, I'll be able to craft a flexible crafting shard of blindness immunity, meaning I can put it pretty much anywhere I want. And I do use those if I want to put a uh, feather fall on something else. Like I think I put, I think I crafted feather fall into my, uh, Kenneth bracers. Oh, okay. Whenever I, I needed to. And no worries. Flexible shard. No worries to say about the flexible shards. The plan is to not launch with yeah. flex shards, but we think there is a good balance that can be found between random named crap looted, uh, crafted loot and flex shards will knock some of that out of the way. The Canis system will be a different system from before, and some of the power and versatility is tough to see without getting your hands on the system. I want to withhold judgment on that one. Because I I use the flexible crafting shards and it's makes lets me tailor my gear the way I want it and so we'll see we'll see if I like it or not I'm withholding judgment on that one <laughs> you don't care I can tell <laughs> I'm like uh, okay you're like what even is that <laughs> it sounds cool but if you say you're waiting okay we'll wait and see how that works out and I don't understand what this thing says about trinkets. I was just very excited about the the crafting recipes letting you try something within 15 levels instead of within Yeah, I know levels. in in this thread there was a lot of people that were excited about that. So yeah. and but now I actually understand yes that is a very good thing. Because when I read that like I told you uh before the show here, I I was I when I first read this post I'm like, okay, that sounds like a good thing, but then I read it again and I'm like, well that doesn't sound like a good thing. <clears throat> you know, it was kind of one of them but the way you explained yeah, it it yeah, makes the other thing so, that's yeah. suspect down here is it talks about DR breakers. We're looking into adding DR breakers into Good Evil, etc. But what? 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 That means there's not going to be anything like that to begin with. Because I I could have swore the first set of crafting notes I read said that we would still be able to craft metaline, which is a DR breaker. <laughs> so uh, what are they talking about? But, and and we're looking into adding DR breakers, good evil, etc. But you can craft that now. Yeah, I'm you just can craft good. You can craft evil. So this is confusing to me. I don't know what this means. I'm kind of trying to find that, and now I can't <laughs> find uh, that it's because towards the bottom of the first post. No, I'm the things, not directly related to Kenneth, but do affect Kenneth. Where he talked about, because I'm pretty sure you're right. They did talk. He had talked about they were going to add that in, and now they're saying they're not going to. Yeah. Uh, here it is. Uh, cap- crafting groups. Crafting negative. Blah, 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 blah. So, um, you are not. You haven't crafted anything, right? Not even one thing. No. Not so one your thing. crafting level will be zero <laughs> or one. <laughs> zero point. My crafting zero. level. I've been working pretty hard trying to get it up as high as I can, and I'm st- I'm not anywhere near the cap. I have total crafting XP right now. I'm 130,000. So my level is going to fall, according to this chart here, somewhere below 260. So, and are you okay with that? Are you yeah. like, okay, okay, so that's... We're current max, yeah, because there's a little arrow, uh, 245,000 is where current maxed out crafters end up. So, oh, that's good to know. <laughs> that's good to know that I'm creeping up towards the cap. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to ask, do you actually have a have a capped out crafter, or are you pretty no. close? No, no. Uh, I have another 100,000 XP to go. Looks That's just something insane like that. insane to me. Yeah, it was hard. Well, it's hard to get there. You start crafting, and then you start getting levels, and then you run out of stuff. And then you got to go back and do things like quest. And who has time for that? <laughs> hey, nobody got time for that. Seriously. All right, well, 
Uh, good post. I like this, except for uh, one, two, three, four, five things. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing is awesome. The rest, yeah, no, the rest is, mm, I don't know, man. <laughs> so we'll see. Uh, hopefully, once again, maybe we'll get a chance to look at this on the Mania at some point in mm-hmm. the future. That's the hope. That's that is the hope. So I know you usually don't do. No, I usually Anya, don't. But for this, I would do it. But yeah, it's that was going to be my question. Would I would want to. I want to know what I'm getting myself into. You like so you will. So okay. So we'll have to have you back on after the money is up, and then you mm-hmm. you, can, you can tell us the the hands on crafting, yay mm-hmm. or nay. So let's move on. Uh, after all of that game news, we have, of course, our DDO Chronicle issue number one ninety eight. We do have a new DDO streamer on the official stream team, and I am going to total butcher your name. I apologize in advance, but I'm going to say Shakejayo, maybe Shakejo. Anyway, new streamer, Saturdays at 10 p.m. Watch him. I'm sure he's awesome because he's on the stream team, and only cool people are on there. That's true. That That's 100% correct. <laughs> See, I got one thing right then. I know. <laughs> There's also a new uh, character planner in the works that is by a player named uh, Amandur. You can check that out to get a sneak peek of what he's doing with a new character planner. I know a lot of people love to really min-max and plan out their characters, and more options is always good. Also, uh, in the Chronicle this week, we have our fan site in section, the Order of Syntec- Syn- uh, man, I cannot talk tonight. Synclectica delves into the Zen Archer build. So if you're into builds, check out that Zen Archer build, DDO Gamer. And Jeff is remembering old content, so check to check his blog post out on that. Even Note suffers some asteroid rage. Click to read what that's about. I could make a joke here, but I won't. And then Mickey is continuing the solo raids that she's doing, and she is soloing the Shroud. That's freaking awesome. So click, that is, I just, I cannot imagine even attempting that. So good on you for even attempting it. And I've watched, uh, I can't remember which raid it was, but I watched one of her YouTube videos, and it was freaking amazing. I was like, okay, I don't even pretend to know what I'm doing. I know. Doing. After no, watching I watched that, really I'm like, powerful I'm, characters play, and it makes yeah. me feel small and insignificant, and... Like, I'm playing a different game. Yeah, I'm like, okay, I'm done. I'm out. The screenshot of the week in our chronicle is, of course, from uh, Korthos. When the dragon breathes on the mind player. That is an awesome shot. I love that. We do have our chronicle question of the week, though. What happens when an adventurer tries to use a maul to hammer a nail? Well, when all you have is a maul. Every problem looks like a nail that you hammer with a maul, I guess. So, I don't know. That sounded better in my head. <laughs> I was going to say, that didn't even make sense, but okay. I know. <laughs> Good attempt, maybe, yes. Uh, I didn't actually have an answer for that. Usually I have answers for these, and I'm like, I, they probably smash their finger really bad because uh, malls are, like, big. But... I think you'd need a big nail. you need to be building a railroad or something like that. And Brack Barefeet in the chat is saying, yes, a broken thumb. So, yeah. <laughs> I agree. That is what would happen. So that's our chronicle for the week. We'll move on to our store sales, our free sample of the week through the 28th. You can get a Bigby's Blue Guiding Hand. You will get five guiding hands when you use the coupon code Get the Point, and that is one per account. And I will I got ad- mine already. I will admit I have been tempted about these Bigby's hand, but I was. I'll be honest. I wasn't going to spend the turbine points on them, but I'll get these free ones and check them out and see if they're worth buying. Have you mm-hmm. actually used them yet? No, I haven't used one yet, but. But I got them. You, you, and you get five of them. So. And I do believe, if I am correct, that was a community request to get that as a free sample. And it is now a free sample. So if you have suggestions for them, let them know. And apparently they will make the free sample happen. Because I remember there was a thread at one point uh, in the forums that tried to get Big B's as a free sample. Also in the store, we have 20% off Astral Shards, Guild Renown Elixirs, 50% off the Guild Charters, and the Guild Airship Beacons. And that is what we have for sale in the DDO store. Let's move on to our site news over on ddoplayers.com. I put up an article that was uh, ingeniously titled, The Top 6 Most Anticipated Games to Look Forward to at Gen Con 2016. What I did is uh, mention that. I put my six games I am most looking forward to seeing at Gen Con, which is uh, 10 days away, which that blows my mind, actually. It's only 10 days. 
you're going to have to report on how many Pokemon Go players, how many people you see playing. Oh my god. Pokemon Go. My friends and I have already been talking about that. It's going to be a nightmare. Because you know how bad it was anyway with people stopping to take cosplayer pictures. Mm-hmm. So imagine that. And the One Direction concert. Yeah. I remember oh, that. Oh, my God. That, oh, <laughs> that was like a living hell. Did you get accosted by little girls? Yes, I did, as a matter of fact. <laughs> I still have nightmares about One Direction, but yeah. So, uh, yeah, Gen Con 2016, 10 days away. Top six games I'm looking forward to personally. Number six is from AEG, and it is called Mystic Veil. Vale. Have you heard about this game yet? No. It is a brand new card game. It's a deck builder, kind of pressure luck card game. But this has a little twist to it. You are actually going to craft the cards that you need. The cards are kind of oversized, and they have clear plastic on them. And you take another card, and you slide it in to actually craft a card. So you can decide what you need and what will get you further towards your goal. So you can just craft each round. You you can either use cards that are already there or you can just craft cards that you know that you're, you're going to need. So that sounds pretty amazing. Can't wait to check that out. Number five, of course, the Goonies Adventure Card Game. I mean, it's the Goonies. What more can we say? See, now I know yeah. you have seen the Goonies. Of course. Unlike Pine Leaf, who has not seen the Goonies. <gasps> I know. You know, that was part of the mandatory culture education. I made my kids watch it. See, parenting, you're doing it right. Right. And number four, uh, the Goonies, I should say, is from Albino Dragon. So we're going to check that out at Gen Con. Number four is from Rather Dashing Games. It is We Come in Peace. Of course, that is the uh, strategic dice game for two to six players where you're trying to blow each other's planets up basically by chucking dice. You will have your battle dice and your defense dice. Uh, we did check this out and we had an interview with the designer uh, at Origins this year. So if you want to check that out on our site. You could do that, but it does actually release at Gen Con, so the first time you can buy it will be in a few days. We come in peace from Rather Dashing Games. Uh, I was just going to say, I wonder if that Rather Dashing Games is named for the HomestarRunner.com's. Um, they have a, a really cool, well, they, it, first it was a trailer for a game, and then they made it into a game, and then they made it into a movie trailer. Um, Trogdor, have you heard about it? And no. the part of the trailer is you are rather dashing. And that's the name of the main character is called rather dashing. And that's the first time I've ever heard that out of that, really? context, out of that context before. So I wonder if they're related. Well, I will have to ask them if that's yeah. where they got that there. Uh, yeah, I'll give you the link so that you can watch the trailer. It's really cool. Yeah, it sounds you have to turn I, In the game, you have to turn yourself into a peasant, and you have to smell like a peasant. So you have to cover yourself in smelly stuff. And then you have to set yourself on fire. And I love that. Uh, Start running. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Checking the email. Uh, number three, we have Blood and Plunder. Blood and Plunder. Wow, I cannot speak tonight. And that is from Firelock Games. Of course, we talked about this Kickstarter a lot as the Kickstarter was progressing. This is the historically accurate pirate mini game. So you're uh, plundering on the Caribbean coast uh, with minis, and it is a historically accurate war game set uh, with pirates. So that can't be bad at all, can it? And of course, number two, I had to mention the Buffy the Vampire Slayer game that is coming from Jasco Games. We did uh, get a peek at this at Origins. We didn't get to play it, so I'm excited that I'm actually going to get a demo play of this game. It looks amazing. Who doesn't want to be Buffy? And... Who doesn't want to be Buffy? That's right. And you know what I want to see you do at Gen Con just once, just one year, and even if it's one of the years where I go and I do this with you, I want to do a vampire LARP with Draculetta. I want to do like World of Darkness or something. That would be. I think that would be so cool. Interesting, actually. <laughs> when uh, hear another Gen Con story for you. When my daughter comes to Gen Con with me, usually she LARPs the entire time, and one of her favorite things to do is the World of Darkness. She tried it. She and one of her friends tried it out, and it, they only did the first night because it was a two-part. It was a two-night deal, and they came back and they begged us. Both girls wanted to go back to the second night because really? they were just they were like, "It's going down. You don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> the skin's so dramatic. I have to see what happens." <laughs> I will be the first to admit that I have never actually LARPed. <laughs> really? It's nope. so much fun. <laughs> I've heard that. I've watched people do it, and I'm just like, I don't know. Oh, you take to it like a duck to water. You'd be sh- you'd be shocked at how easy. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, but next time you go to Gen Con, uh-huh. we will do that. Since okay. I know I, I I know you're not going this year. Done. No, I'm not going this year. Maybe okay. next year. Okay. 
Well, we'll we we will make that happen then. And God help us all. <laughs> Dracula <laughs> of role playing as a vampire would make my life. <laughs> I'm glad to be of assistance. <laughs> and the number one game we are most looking forward to at Gen Con 2016 is the Meta Arcade digital adaption of Tunnels and Trolls. Because it's Tunnels and Trolls. That's all we need to say. Did you ever play Tunnels and Trolls? No, but you know you need to add one to the, your list. What's that? You need to add Keith Baker's Phoenix card game, and you need to see if you can catch up with him. Oh, I forgot. I yeah, forgot he talked a lot out. about it on the 100th episode of the Cocktail Hour, this last episode that we put out, uh, because we had a surprise guest, and it was Keith Baker. And he's going to be at Gen Con demoing this game, see if you can play it. Well, I'm going to have That's the to... first time it's going to be available for sale is at Gen Con. At Gen Con? Well, I yeah. will definitely try to check that out then, because I've been reading really great yeah, things. Yeah, he but... makes good games. Does everyone play Gloom? Yes, I love Gloom. Yeah, so you should check it out. Add it to your list. I will do that. So, Keith Baker, if you're listening, which I know you're probably not, but I will be stopping by your booth. Uh, We'll move on from the dungeon and see what we have from there. And speaking of the world of darkness that you mentioned and the LARPing that goes on, we are getting a world of darkness documentary. It's going to be a two-part series on the history and evolution of one of the pretty much most prolific and genre-defining role-playing franchises, I would say, in the history of RPGs. Wow. And we were just talking about World of Darkness LARPing at Gen Con. Yep. And see, it just fell in perfectly. Exactly. Ah. So, yes, uh, there is no... Like I read the show notes. Yeah, see, exactly. (laughs) See, I told you earlier, you are a professional. I I didn't read the show notes. I just... (laughs) I know you didn't. See, I can just be talking about anything right now. I know. And and you're just going, uh uh-huh, sir, fine. Yep, yep, Yep. I agree totally. Yep, sounds good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I could be, like, deleting stuff out of the show notes, and you're like, "Ah, I don't know what you're talking about, so... So, yeah, we do have a teaser trailer for this up on the site. Uh, there's no date for this yet, but if you're into Vampire the Masquerade or World of Breakfast itself, this is something you're going to want to check out because there was so much surrounding the history and creation of this game that uh, this should be a pretty good uh, series to watch. And it's going to be a two-part. So look for that uh, early next year, middle next year, they said. They're not quite sure when it's going to be out. But uh, World of Darkness documentary coming out. And then now uh, we do have a new edition of the Force Gray series. Of course, we've been talking about that. That is the new show with Matt Mercer as the DM and uh, Chris Hardwick, uh, which still just cracks me up. His character name is Will Wheaton. And oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. It's, have you, like, watched this Force Gray yet? If you no. haven't watched it, you have to watch it. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's And there is, like, a couple of people that have never played D&D before, and they're playing, and they're just comedians, and it is just amazing what what, what they do. Did you watch Titan's Grave at all when that series was on? No. This is similar, as I said last week, they kind of shoot this similar to how they shot Titan's Grave. So all all the people are just kind of like sitting around a table on on a sofa. And uh, it's just great. So yes, episode two, this one was entitled Giants, Ogres, and Goblins. Oh my! And of course, this is following the new storyline that's coming out for D&D Storm King's Thunder. So if you were interested in what they're going to do with the Giants, you can see this. It's spoiler free for that storyline. This is something Matt Mercer created uh, with Wizards of the Coast to go alongside of the Storm King's Thunder storyline. So you're not going to get spoiled by watching this, but highly recommend it. It is very well produced and funny as all get out. Also, uh, from the dungeon, we have uh, the DMs Guild. The modules that are the official DM Guild modules are now going to be available in Fantasy Grounds as well. And, of course, Fantasy Grounds is the online uh, app where you can play uh, Dungeons & Dragons with your friends. If you go on the Dungeon uh, Master's Guild and buy the... Thing. Buy the thing. Buy all the things, <laughs> and they would be happy. Uh, Adventures League titles. Yes, that's the words I was looking for. Uh, if you buy those on Dungeon Master's Guilds, you will also get a .mod file with your PDF. And if you put that .mod file into your module section of your Fantasy Grounds install, 
the module will be playable in Fantasy Grounds for you. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, my, it is my tabletop really awesome. They are awesome. That we play about once every three weeks, I want to say. And we're doing Fantasy Grounds. Are you? I like it a lot, yeah. That's I'm surprised yeah. because most people are using Roll20. There's nothing- we started out in Roll20, and the, the DM decided he wanted us to use Fantasy Grounds, so we switched. I'm not, and I'm not, I'm not the DM, so I switched as well. No, I funny. wanted to stay in the game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying anything bad about Roll Twenty because I, I'll be honest, I have. I enjoyed Roll Twenty much, too, but from what I've used of it and how I've used Fantasy Grounds, Fantasy Grounds is so much better. I like that you can see your dice and that you can change the color and I know see, throw them across the screen it's and that's just fun. The little things. Yeah. It's yeah. Right. So yeah, so the, this is great. And if you previously have purchased uh, any of the Adventure League's titles that are now available with the .mod files, you should be getting an update uh, on your Dungeon Masters Guild account where you can download the .mod files for them. So that's good that you don't have to rebuy what you've already bought. And then also, we are in a political election season. So oh, yeah. we're going to tread lightly on this. Uh-huh. We have a new RPG out, and we're just going to say Cthulhu for president. I'd vote for Cthulhu. Uh, everybody votes for Cthulhu. <laughs> because he you makes don't have you a insane. Choice. You don't have a choice. <laughs> but then I, I love the tagline for this. It's, why settle for the lesser evil? <laughs> why settle for the lesser evil? He wins all the evil. I like what they did there. <laughs> That's freaking awesome. <laughs> it is. It's really freaking awesome. Yes, yeah, so Cthulhu for president, you will become an elder party uh, staffer tasked with serving the great old one during the eternal struggle for domination. Cross wits with the other political parties, manipulate voters using non geometry, swear on the Necronomicon, and sacrifice your co workers to the elder gods. Politics has always been evil, but so, destroying the world has never been this much fun. Nice. So, Tuesday, that's a Tuesday for you. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <All> right. <laughs> Or as I call it, Tuesday. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Cthulhu for President is available over on the uh, Chaosium web store. And this actually w- has been a joke forever. And Chaosium has always kind of joked about making an RPG for this because for as long as I think there's been an internet, basically, the Cthulhu for President joke has always been around during election years. And by God, they made an RPG of it. So. Check that out, and just remember, why settle for the lesser evil? There's a new Star Trek role-playing game coming out. Are you into Star Trek? Yes, I am. (laughs) I thought you were. So, Star Trek Adventures, brand new RPG coming out from Modiphius Entertainment. This uh, is in celebration of Star Trek's 50th anniversary. Uh, Would you want to play a Star Trek RPG, would be the question. I don't know. What do I have to do? Do I have to download stuff? Do I have to play online? Do I have to talk to people? <laughs> I'm not very good at that. I don't, I don't want to like, <laughs> to like deal with people. I know. It was really hard. It was the weirdest thing going out to play. Po- there I go. Playing, talking about Pokemon again. Going out to play Pokemon Go and talking to strangers. It was very awkward. But, very odd. but stranger danger. Yeah. Stranger danger, right? Just didn't exist that day. So if so, the moral of the story is there's no stranger danger if you're playing Pokemon Go. Um, no, apparently there is. So <laughs> you have to be really situational awareness, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So don't... anyway, tell me about this. De- tell me anyway, about this yes, thing. Back to the Star Trek Adventures RPG. I derail you so easily. Yes, you do. <laughs> Darn you! It's all your fault, Lessa. It's always your fault. Of course, I blame everything on you, even if you're not here. I still even blame if you. I'm not here. I do. <laughs> Okay, ask, good. Ask Pine Leaf. My mom was saying, ah, it's less as well. He's like, what? I'm like, never mind. It's not important. <laughs> yes, uh, Modifius Entertainment is excited to announce that they are developing uh, the new RPG, Star Trek Adventures. This is uh, the first uh, official Star Trek role-playing game that is going to be produced in more than a decade. Fans of the legendary Star Trek television series and the films will not only boldly go to the new final frontier, but they will shape the voyages and missions through Star Trek Adventures Living Campaign. This is going to be a playtest that they are kicking off, and you can sign up for this starting at Gen Con. But they are going to be doing some online uh, signups for this as well, too. 
And it's uh, following the films and the TV show both, which is kind of different because usually games either pick one of mm -hmm. the either go, you know, the shows or the films. So this is going to be both, and you're actually going to be able to shape the way things are changing because they're going to do a living campaign as well. So not cool. much else is known of it other than uh, the kickoff will be at uh, Gen Con in uh, 10 days, actually, from when we record this. You can sign up for that, and then there will be a sign-up online as well if you want to check out the Living Campaign, and this should be available early next year. So that's Star Trek Adventures. And finally, we have some more Gen Con news. The Acrobatica Infintia Circus is coming back to Gen Con. I remember last year... This uh, was in the Weston Grand Ballroom. There was, I was attending, I can't remember what was in there at the time, but when we came out of whatever was in there, there was like all these circus people and all this circus equipment and everybody's like, what's going on? So the circus is coming to Gen Con, which Gen Con is kind of a circus anyway, but this yeah. is not just any normal circus. This is the nerd circus. This is uh, people doing uh, circus Things, trapeze, rings, stuff like that, but uh, it is nerd-themed. So this year they are having a, a spirit-juggling Tellurio, which I have no idea what it is. A pole-dancing Aqua Woman, which who doesn't want to see that? And also a foot juggler, just to name a few. And they are going to have a Deadpool that is going to jump through fiery hoops. And I'm sure we will see other nerdy things in the Acrobatica Infintia Circus coming back to Gen Con for the second year in a row. Tickets for this are on sale. You do need a Gen Con badge to attend this, though, plus get an extra ticket for it. But more information can be found over on our site, of course, on the post on ddoplayers.com. And that is it for From the Dungeon and our role-playing game news. So let's move into the tabletop and see what we have uh, in board game news. The Spiel de Jaris and the Kinderspiel de Jaris. And uh, for all the German folks out there, sorry, I just butchered that. But uh, I don't speak German, but that should be close enough. It's basically the game of the year and the advanced game of the year. If you want to know what all those fancy German words need, mean, the Spiel de Jaris winner this year was Codenames, which uh, Codenames is winning all sorts of awards, and that is like the the board game of the day right now. Everybody's loving Codenames. I've actually never played it. The Kinderspiel de Jaris, of course, is the advanced game of the year, and that is a game I've never heard of called the Isles of the Sky from Chieftain to King, and that is from Mayfair Games. That is also winning a ton of awards as well. So our Kinder, Kinderspiel de Jaris and Spiel de Jaris winners, Codenames in Isles of the Sky from Chieftain to a King. And also, uh, there is a new tabletop box subscription service that is out now that is geared towards the tabletop gamer. And it is called uh, the Tabletop Box, an apropos name. It is just like any other subscription box. Cost you $50 a month to get it. But as I said, it is geared towards uh, tabletop gamers. You are going to get one full tabletop RPG or board game a month. You will get one exclusive item, one, one themed wearable item, and a random themed item. And of course, uh, just like other tabletop box or other uh, subscription boxes, these do have themes. The July theme, which uh, is the one that I reviewed, you can see the full review over on ddoplayers.com, was uh, Aliens coming up here in August. It's Steampunk. Witchcraft is going to be in September. Zombies will be in October. Silver Screen, number one, in November. And Demons in December. Uh, I liked what I saw of the July box. The game that was in it was actually a $50 game, so that would pretty much pay for your subscription to the box. So it's just like you were buying a random game that you don't know what you're going to get. Could be bad, could be good, you know, we'll have, we'll have to see. And uh, then the other stuff uh, in the July box, there was a necklace and a comic book and a uh, art piece. So that's what was in the July, but I did do an un unboxing video and kind of talked about it a little bit. You can check that out, but that is the Tabletop Box subscription service, which uh, is brand new to the scene. Uh, the first box actually was uh, the July box. So you can check that out over on our site and uh, get yourself a subscription to that. Of course, there is more Cthulhu news as well. Cthulhu in the House is coming from Cool Mini R Not. 
Uh, you just uh, can't keep Cthulhu away. It seems like that is the rage right now. You can't stop talking about it. I cannot stop talking about <laughs> Cthulhu. Cthulhu was everywhere. This one is coming, as I said, from Cool Manier Not Spaghetti Western Games and Flatline Games. It's a board game, Cthulhu in the House. It is a Royal Rumble to see which old one has the staying power to outlast their opponent. Players will hide their identities and compete over three rounds to battle to determine who is the toughest Cthulhu in the house. So it's Cthulhu versus Cthulhu. That uh, should be interesting. There is no interesting. Cthulhu but Cthulhu. <laughs> That's right. There, there can only be one Cthulhu. Just like Highlander, there's only one. The game is going to debut at Gen Con 2016 with a manufacturer retail price of $24.99. So that's Cthulhu in the house, coming from Cool Mini or Not. And our other news in Tabletop this week is there is a new Vampire, ha- vampire Hunter game coming from Dark Gate Games. Quiet for so long, the night is rising again, they say. The spreading of tendrils... Evil throughout an empty and unwatched backwoods of the world. That sounds kind of scary. Once again, vampires are spreading from den to den, aiding, adding locals to their body count. You know, vampires just need to feed, that's all. They can't help when they kill people. It's not their fault. Or maybe they're going to add them to their ranks. You'll have to find out. This uh, is over on Kickstarter. It is fully funded. It funded uh, within about an hour once it went up. It's a fully cooperative, miniature-based board game for one of four players. But it is a fully cooperative game, which that kind of seems to be the it thing for board games right now. Uh, Everybody is doing cooperative games. But this one, uh, as I said, is funded, so they're working on those stretch goals. So check that out. You have about 20 more days to get in on this if you want to check it out. We have the link over on uh, the DDOplayers.com Vampire Hunters post I put up. Dark Gate Games Vampire Hunters. We did a review of the Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunters. This is coming from Mattel Games. This is a remake of the German game. And here I'm going to butcher some more Germans. So German people don't hate me. I'm sorry. This is the Geister Geister Schatzmeister. I'm sure I just cussed in German probably. <laughs> I'm sure, like, German people are laughing. He's like, he said... They are laughing at you, but... They are. I'm sure <laughs> that's, they are. that's not uh, what you think. <laughs> <laughs> it's not what I think? Okay. Yeah. All right. Good to know. Uh, that's what it looks like, but I, I don't... <laughs> so how how do you say that? Do you know German? I'm not looking at what you're looking at, so I don't know. Oh, okay. I, uh, very little. Ambition. I lived in Germany for five years. Did you now? So, mm-hmm. It was stationed there. Doesn't mean I speak it very well. (laughs) But yes, this uh, game has been out for a while now. It came out uh, in 2013 over in Germany. People have been clamoring for an English version of it. And we have it now. The players are taking on the role of treasure hunters. You're going to move into a haunted house. Try to find the six jewel tokens before the house is overrun by ghosts. At the start of the game, uh, you set up the board. There is just a few ghosts. And the six treasure hunters, but as you play the game, you add more ghosts. If three or more ghosts occupy one room, that room turns into a haunting. That is bad because if you have six hauntings on the board or five hauntings on the board, you lose. So you don't want that to happen. We do have a, a gameplay video up and setup video of this. Uh, love this game; it is so much fun to play. There is a basic version and an advanced version. Uh, I've only played the basic version so far, but it is a blast. It game play changes every time because it's very random based because you draw cards and there is a shuffle card that is in there so you might be think you're doing very good because you only have you say you have four of your treasure tokens out of the house so you just have a few more to get and you have a few ghosts on the board well then you draw that shuffle card all of the previous cards that you've drawn you have to shuffle back into the deck and guess what ghost will go back in the rooms that you were in so the hauntings can um, stack up pretty quickly so check this one out from Mattel games it is ghost fighting treasure hunters highly highly recommend this game and this is what i call a gateway game this is good for kids because it's not scary even though you know it has the the ghost name to it the little ghost figurines are just so cute they are just not scary at all so kids are are not going to get scared about this game uh it's a good game for adults to play with kids so it it is a good game to get your kids to board game yeah get them hooked on gaming exactly they'll never have money to go out and (laughs) get stupid that's right Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunters in stores now from Mattel Games. And that is it for On the Tabletop. So let's move in to, we'll just call it the Lessa section. What? Uh, yeah, see, I'm going to spring this on you. 
Because I heard on the latest Damsels podcast. Oh, right. <laughs> and we kind of alluded to this at the beginning of the show. Um, well, you were the one that tweeted. This is how, this is how it went down. So, okay. Draculetta tweeted about how he had drank some coffee, mm-hmm. cold coffee, iced coffee. I made some iced brew coffee. Yes. I made like an ice. And I you were the king of coffee and yeah. you were going to be staying up for days. And it was only 45 minutes till our show. And Saba said, well, why don't you just go ahead and stay up and join us for the damsels? And uh-huh. you just went to sleep. So apparently coffee just put you yeah. right to sleep. <laughs> yeah. I like got up the next day and I see this like DM from like Saba and I'm like, oh man, the damsels wanted me. Mm-hmm. And then oh, yeah. I we talked about you. We talked about yeah. what we're going to do to you. And then I so I like sent her back. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I had to get up early the next day. So I just went to bed. And she's mm-hmm. like, oh, that's fine. We'll just talk about it on the podcast. Yeah, oh, we did. <laughs> we did. So what is this hazing thing? I keep, Yeah, the hazing of Jaculetta. That's what I alluded. came up with. I thought that it would be fun for us to take you through quests that we think you won't like. And make you do them. So my and suggestion was... How was that fun? Yeah, I, It's fun for us. Oh, okay. <laughs> it might not be fun for you. I didn't hear the <laughs> us part of that, but okay. Okay. So, and I think Saba and Mithri had their own suggestions as well. Oh, I'm sure they did. <laughs> so what is this first, like, horrible thing you're going to see? Because you've already dragged me through the Crucible. We did. So how, how, what, how could it get any worse from there? Exactly. How could it be any worse than the Crucible swim? I wholeheartedly agree. How can it get worse than that? <laughs> I don't know. The let's have you done the Titan? The Titan not. raid? I have not. Okay, well then that that is what we will do then. We'll take okay. you through the Titan. So again, how is this fun? I'm big big long quest where you have to split the party and do all kinds of crazy never puzzles. Never split the party. Oh no, yeah. puzzles, I'm out. Right there. I'm out. I'm done. <laughs> That's all I need to know. Nope. Out. I don't do puzzles. Mm-hmm. Not not in my contract to do puzzles. It's not in your contract. Not in my contract. <laughs> I have a writer in my contract. He does not. It do really? Or, okay, I'll let them know. And it, and it's oh. highlighted and it's like bold. Yeah. Okay. So you got to make me do quest I don't like. Yeah, that's what we thought it was my idea anyway. I'm. Why does that not surprise me? <laughs> So when is all this going to take place? I don't know. I don't know. Whenever you say that you can actually stay up and play with us. So. Okay. Oh, oh, see, see yeah. now I have to stay up late. <laughs> right. Jeez. <laughs> and then again, how is this fun? add-ons to this deal. I'm still trying to find out how this is fun. I'm losing. <laughs> You're losing where it's, the fun is at? <laughs> it's a little hazy how this is fun. I think it would be really fun for people to see you be uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm sure it would. Your it's... discomfort is entertaining to others. Think about it. You know, if you you have to give back every once in a while. If to the they too. watched that uh, Crucible run, they knew I was very uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. It was there were a lot of pointy sticks. <laughs> there was. Well, see that crucible. It was okay until the swim. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everything was great until it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, until it wasn't, and then until somebody left me in the water. <laughs> that was. I think that was me. I think it's, I might have left. It's not even the... funny. It's not even funny. You're laughing, but it was not funny. It was a very traumatic experience. <laughs> was, my still, poor are wolf. you still in therapy for? It? <laughs> I am, as a matter of fact. My poor wolf. It. Every time I go near water now, my wolf just starts to, like, shake mm-hmm. and, like, have, like, PSTD about it. And, like, it's just, it's horrible. PTSD. I'm sorry. But yes. it's okay. <laughs> well, see? You can't even say it right. That's how traumatized that's right. It's so are. traumatic to me. I can't even pronounce it right. Because you okay. left me in the water. I'm just, like, I'm, I'm like, shivering. <laughs> my poor little wolf is, like, what am I doing? it will not come easy. <laughs> Okay, so apparently uh, the damsels are going to haze me. So coming soon, I guess. Coming soon. Yeah, hopefully. So, and we already have a list of things you're going to make me do other than... I don't know. Maybe there's a short list somewhere. Yeah. She probably has a post-it somewhere. I'm sure Saba has a spreadsheet. (laughs) Um, Yes, she's got a PowerPoint presentation already. (laughs) I'm sure she does. (laughs) Uh, so, yes, coming soon, apparently, I get to do stuff I don't like. Yeah. <laughs> Which, uh, yeah, see, because I have said more than once, I have to be careful when I talk about what I do in game. Because oh, yes. I know it comes back and haunts me. Because if I say I don't like a quest, it's like I am automatically think, why did you say that, dummy? Because you say you don't like it, you know what happens. Bad damsel thing happened. 
It's so, true. It's true. Wow, that leads right into your week in gaming. What'd you See, do? It does. See? Yeah. Nice. I Such am a professional. professional. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so the week in gaming. Uh, I will go first and then I will let Alessa because I'm sure she had a lot of stuff other than Pokemon Go. But you, uh-huh. you can talk about that if you want. It's, mm-hmm. it's up to you. I already uh, did. I did. You did, actually. You you derailed the show within like two minutes, actually. So <laughs> congratulations uh, to that. Achievement uh, unlocked uh, you. Uh, <laughs> uh, over on Kenneth, I have my level nine, which is now level nine rogue. That is the one I am running with my friend who is playing a wizard. We ran the Depths of Despair, the Depths of Darkness, Depths of Discord, and the Depths of Doom. I had forgotten how much I actually enjoy those quests because that is some quests that I do all the time because that's, you know, they get p- pretty good experience. And I always forget about them until I run them again. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I love these quests. So yeah, we, they're fast and fun. We ran those on Elite and didn't have uh, any problems at all of those. Well, then he at the end of, I think, Depths of Doom is the last one that we did. He actually dinged to go to level 10. And I was level eight at the not, at the time, so I'm like, number one, we only ever played together. So how the heck did you get so far ahead of me? And we determined it was all the daily dice he's chomping. Oh, okay. the experience really adds up for that. So yeah, it does. so he had two levels on me. So I said, well, you know what? I'm gonna run some stuff and try to get two levels because I said I was eight at the time. Well, I did manage to get one level. I was running some stuff by myself, and I did a series of quests that I swear I don't remember ever running in my life. I went into House P to see if there's anything in there I could run, and I did Rest for the Restless, Purge the Heretics, and Cage Trolls. I ran all of those on Elite, and I really do not remember ever running those before. You know, I think those were there at launch. So you should have run them many times. I I think he's just been skipping them. (laughs) <laughs> because as many characters as, I, as I've had, and yeah. I'm like, I'm real, because I, if I did them, I did not remember. And those are fun quests, too, and they're, they, they are. don't very long. No, they don't, and I really enjoyed them all, actually. They were they were fun. They kind of had uh, um, some interesting mechanics to them. Uh, but, yeah, I was just like, I really didn't remember. The only one I kind of had problems with was Cage Trolls, but that's just because I couldn't figure out what to do at one point. But then um, I saw a ladder, and I ran up a ladder, and then I found, like, the lever that I needed. Ah. So I'm like, oh, yeah, that's what I need to do. But, yeah, so I enjoyed those. So I'm going to make a point to run those every time now. Cool. Um, how I miss those, I don't know. And then I went into the Marketplace, and I did Archer Point Defense on Elite, and I decided to just really um, want to torture myself, and I ran Proof. You ran Proof is in the Poison. <laughs> and Why? I did it on Elite. And then Why? I remembered how much I <laughs> You remember how awful it is. Quest. Yes. <laughs> Even I hate that quest. <laughs> I got about, oh, five minutes into it, and I'm like, that's why I never run this stupid quest. But you I finished it. I did. Oh, I that's did. great. I did finish it. Dee. And you did it all yourself. I did. I was pretty, pretty, pretty pleased good. with myself. But yeah. yeah. But oh my God, I hate that quest. I hate that quest so much. <laughs> it's just so bad. But then again, there's not a lot of people that actually enjoy that quest, I don't think. At least I haven't Sam, found Sam my people. Really? And Saba Jade likes it as well. Saba does not like that. Oh, she does. I am going to have a talk with her tomorrow night. You should. You should have a talk we, with I'm her going about to. her life choices. We are going to have a come to Jesus talk. Proof proof is in the poison. <laughs> she enjoys that quest. Saba, Saba uh, we're going to have a talk. <laughs> and then my ranger, that is level 20. I uh, continued on with the King's Forest Slayers. And I picked up some of the quests for uh, the Underdark. I just haven't gone down there and done any yet. But I was kind of reading about some of those. And those are kind of scaring me because it sounds like some of those are like crazy hard. True? Yes? No? Maybe? What? King's Forest? What? Uh, No, the uh, Underdark quest. Oh, those are so much fun. You you know what you should do? You do what I did. Do them on casual. Nobody cares. You solo them on casual. You'll have a good time. They, you know, when you put a quest on casual, they play smooth jazz <laughs> instead of the dungeon music. Sure, test it out, and you'll see. You get some smooth jazz, you get like a smoking jacket and a pipe. Yeah, if, you, if you've never been in there before and you don't want to embarrass yourself with other people, just go in on casual, do it yourself. I, I, it. I, my world is all askew now, though, because you're like actually suggesting to do something on casual. Uh-huh. 
Yeah. I'm just, I'm all kind of confused about that. I don't know yeah. how I feel about that. You know. <laughs> I'm not sure how I feel about that. Your I, world is turned topsy It is. It is. I guess it's because I'm used to, because I've been playing with Saba. And oh, yeah, oh my God. There's only, one, there's only, like, it's like she only sees one difficulty. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> every time it's like elite, really. Oh, well, we'll be fine. You know, Mithuri and I, when we went, we wanted Purple Dragon Knight favor, both of us. So we had this grand plan that we were going to go to do Wheel on Prison. And we specifically went behind her back and got online when we knew she wasn't going to be online because we did it on Heroic Elite instead of Epic. I think we were level 21 or 22. That's awesome. <laughs> we still got XP! That's awesome. We're both shocked. <laughs> Yes, when you play with Saba, the only way is Elite. That is, I know. That is how it works. <laughs> and every time, I'm like, Elite, really? Do we have to do this? On the- oh, I know, we'll it's like, this is going to hurt. We'll be fine. It'll be all right. I know, she's so confident like, about it, too. And you really? almost believe her. Exactly. So what were you up to in DDO, our gaming in general, if you didn't know? Uh, my DDO. DDO gaming week was super short, because I only got to start back playing today, actually. And I just jumped, I just opened up the social panel, jumped in the first couple pugs that I saw. I ran with so my... you're my, still pugging, huh? Yeah, my epic, character is level 23 right now. And so I just jumped in a two-toed Tobias run, and then a Spies in the House, and then a Wizard King. Did it twice, as a matter of fact. So inquiring minds want to know about your pugging experience. Um, good. Have, have you, <laughs> do people actually know who you are when, when you pug? Every once in a while, that, that happens. It's happened a couple of times, and it, it's really weird. And usually people are totally cool about it, because I'm nobody. Trust me. I'm, I'm <laughs> like that. I'm nobody. I'm nobody. <laughs> Just, I'm not any more important than anyone else. So, uh, but it's pretty cool whenever somebody well, see. I would just says, you "Hey, would... are you the lesser from?" Yeah. And most of the time, it's "Hey, are you the lesser from those wandering monster videos?" <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, <laughs> that's, I am. That's it. And thanks for remembering those. Well, I've from ever done. <laughs> way back in <laughs> yeah. 2010, nine, whatever it was. Mm-hmm. Yep, eight. But, yeah. Oh wow, it was eight. Wow, uh, those were such good videos, though. Timeless. Every w- once in a while, if I need a good laugh, I just like watch. Like usually, it's I'm on a boat. I love that one. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That is like my favorite one, I think. But so I see. I figured you you would get like quote unquote recognized all the time. No. No, it has amplified. I only ever have like one time, and that was on uh, Argo. And How did it make you feel? It was really like weird, actually. Star. <laughs> no, it was weird because I'm like, okay, this is kind of creepy in a way. I mean, it's not like they were doing anything creepy. It was just they were we- stalking you. <laughs> it was just like weird to me because I don't even remember where I was at the time. I think I was in Meridia, maybe. And I was I ran to the auctioneer and then I like ran over to the bank and then I was running to the mailbox. And I noticed like when I was running to the bank, there was somebody like running behind me. And I thought, oh, well, they're going to the bank. Well, then they followed me to the mailbox. And I'm like, OK, that's a little weird, but maybe they're going to the mail. And then I get to, like this tell. It's like, hey, are you Drac from DDO players? And I'm like, uh, maybe. <laughs> it's like, it was just weird to me. I don't know. That's I guess it's because maybe that's the first time it's happened. Maybe if it if it happens more often, I'll get used to it. But it's weird because I'm kind of like you. I'm like, well, yeah, but I mean, you know, I'm really nobody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, it's just weird to me when somebody says stuff like that. But I just figured you would get it all the time because, I mean, you have been in the community. Because I'm Lessa. For, yeah, you are. See, you are <laughs> the Lessa. And, Don't you know who I am? Yeah. And you have been, I mean, well, come on. Let's face it. I mean, you've been in the community for, well, basically since the beginning. Yeah. So I would just think you would get it all the time, but that's interesting. But Mm -hmm. I've never been brave enough. I should actually maybe pug. I've never been brave enough. You should. You should do it. You don't have to talk. Because I've had really. You can have a YouTube video running on your other screen while you play. And then you can blame your lag on DDO like everyone else does. (laughs) Flag. Yeah, you'll fit right in. You'll be fine. So other than that, I had my tabletop group, our Fantasy Grounds group on played this past Sunday. It's pretty cool. I think I'm a level four sorceress in that group. Playing 5e, I'm assuming. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep, and it is very fun. And I, other than Pokemon Go, I've been playing Civilization V. I've noticed you... A crazy amount. Yeah, I've noticed you... I had to win. I kept getting my butt kicked, so I became a little obsessed with winning. And <laughs> a little obsessed. I finally I, won. I like that. I finally, I finally played as China, and I won. I conquered the world. <laughs> that's okay, apparently, that's know. how you win. <laughs> good to know how you win. 
play China yep. and you win. <laughs> yep. <laughs> China equals win. I thought maybe I thought maybe that would take the edge off, you know, winning. <laughs> but now but you it, just want to win. It hasn't. Now I just want to win as someone else. <laughs> I've, I've never gotten into the Civ games, but it's fun. I've noticed a lot of people. I won't name names. <coughs> Saba has been <laughs> playing playing that a lot lately. Yeah, Saba, she's really good. So I can see that. Cause... I can't. I can't wait to get in a multiplayer game with her and just annihilate her off of the planet. Ooh, that could. Ooh. I know, right? Ooh, it's gonna yeah. be great. <laughs> could be a good Twitch session. She might like plan some like evil revenge then, though. You know, she will. Because see, so everybody see. Did, let's talk about Saba for a second <laughs> because she's not here to defend herself. So yes! we can feel free to talk about her. Everybody thinks Saba is the quiet, reserved one. Mm-hmm. She's not. She is not. She's I, a troll. I have played with her since. <laughs> she will. Since we're doing that static group now, I have played with her. Well, plus you know I, I played with you know all, all you and the the damsels before, but since I played with her in, in the static group we've done, she is a troll. She yes. it, but she will say things and you won't un, you won't get it exactly. Understand that you've been trolled for like ten minutes. Exactly. Ten minutes later, you go, oh my god, she trolled me, and that has happened. <laughs> to me because she, she will say something and i'm like well that didn't make any sense and then like you said 10 minutes later i'm like oh ouch oh, that burned oh, yeah burn. <laughs> so yeah so you the forecast is a hundred percent chance of shade <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so your life's goal is to destroy sava and soup good to know yeah why not and yeah i think you do need to twitch that because that would be very interesting right? mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so did you do anything else in gaming this week nope that's it well, we will move on then to our donations. We currently have 27 supporters over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support DDL players, simply head over to our donations page. There you can help support the Players Alliance on Patreon. You will also find rewards that will include a mention on the podcast of your choice. Or you can even get a guest appearance on this very podcast. And that would be cool and see Lessa didn't have to pay to get on, but other I people know. have to pay to get on. I was going to say, I have to give you money. You, you, yeah, you have to give me money. See, that's, yeah. <laughs> you invite me on the show and I have to give you right. money. You owe me money now. That's right. That's see? Crap. I like how that works. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Also, by supporting us on Patreon, you will help uh, us upgrade our cameras and some of our equipment because we are looking to give you some better convention and tabletop uh, play and review coverage. And to do that, we need some microphones phones and cameras and that costs money so there you go we had no itunes reviews this week either we would love one of those just head over to itunes and give us a review if you would be so inclined we had no feature comments or no emails but if you would like to email us podcast at ddoplayers.com you can also follow us all on twitter the players alliance which is our network at players ally ddo players at ddo players draculina at draculina underscore 72 I'm still trying to get the just at Draculetta, but the Draculetta is not giving it up, and they ha- have never tweeted ever since they've signed up, but I digress. Pine Leaf is at Pine Leaf Needles, and you can also join our Steam group as well to get updates on what we're doing. Uh, Lessa is at Lessa mm-hmm. on Twitter, and you want to tell us where they can follow the damsels? Oh, you can go to damselsofddo.com and go to our vault for our latest show, which will be up. It should really be up now, <laughs> but I can't get to the site <laughs> because every because once in a while I get sense. every once in a while I get locked out of the damsels website. Like today, I got locked out of the damsels website, so I have to wait for Sada, and then it'll be up tonight. See, to, that's to just show. that revenge for that sieve. I'm telling you, I know, it's starting right? now. <laughs> You haven't even beat her yet, but she's it's already a conspiracy. Right. See? I'm telling you, you gotta watch out for Sama. I'm telling you, <laughs> it's always the quiet ones. That's right. And uh, you guys also are a member of the stream team as well. Yes, we are proud members of the DDO live stream team. Thanks. You plug me better than I plug me. <laughs> professional, <laughs> remember? You're I am such a professional. professional. You can catch us every other Tuesday at 11 Pacific time on the DDO live stream channel. That's twitch.tv slash DDO stream. And also, the Players Alliance has other live shows as well. Monday nights, of course, you can catch this show normally at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Also, on Saturdays, we have uh, Lotro Players News at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Every other Saturday after Lotro Players News, we have the Tales of the Free Folk. The last Friday of every month at 8.30 p.m. Eastern is the Lotro Academy After School. And every other Thursday at about 9.30 Eastern-ish. 
we have XP Quest. So check all of those live shows out. You can find each and every one of those at our live page, ddoplayers.com slash live. And Lessa, do you have anything else that you want to add? Uh, no, just thanks for having me on. Well, thanks for coming on and really thank you a lot because you did. Thank you like, for not having a thank, life. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> thank you for being out on your Poke Walk and yep. actually answering right. my question. Oh, <laughs> man, I thought I had a Pokemon <laughs> and I looked down and I was like, oh! Well, see, I, I did get a tweet <laughs> that there are like vampire bats. So apparently mm-hmm. there's vampire bat po- pokies. So be on the lookout for the vampires. I guess, if you're into Pokemon. I don't know. So, so, but yes, but seriously, thank you very much for uh, coming and uh, supporting me and helping me out because this was a very last minute thing. I knew uh, I wasn't going to be able to do the show at the correct time and I knew I didn't want to do it by myself and I was trying to find somebody and Lessa came through. So she is amazing. So support Lessa and the <laughs> damsels of GDO and all she does because she's just amazing. So there you go. We will talk to you next week. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. Cheers. <laughs>